Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back, child, with a brand new review for these heifers. The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 14. Child, they still tossing salads and teabagging and whatnot, but we're going to get into it as we get into it. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade. If you are back for a 14th time, then welcome back. Child, please do not hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't just come and watch the video or else, you know, I might have to get into it as they get into it on Potomac. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I really need for y'all to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, child. Now, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. So, when the episode first opens up, Mia gets a big old handful of salad. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> I was looking at that. I said, dang, Mia almost picked up the whole plate of salad. Maybe her hands are a little hefty, but that's no reason for her to be treated this way. Moving forward. Candace knocking things over and whatnot, child. So Karen is like, do you know her mother's story? Do you? And so Ashley was in the background like, you don't know her mother's story. She was like, you don't know her story. Shut up. I'm like, oh my God, honey, this is a mess. So Mia comes back in and tells Candace, my mother is a recovering addict. So Candace lets us know that she could kill us. Okay, she really could. At this point, she's crying. I'm like, girl, now what are these tears for? You went straight Judge Mathis and called this woman mama a crackhead. So suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> Y'all know how Judge Mathis be. He be like, you're a crackhead. Your mama a crackhead. Your dog a crackhead. Baby, listen, you make one mistake on Judge Mathis, you're a crackhead. Shout out to Judge Mathis. I'm just saying. So Candace is going straight Judge Mathis. And Mia's like, you need therapy. So she walks away. Then Candace says, gee, get your bitch. I said, oh, no, ma'am. Wendy said, oh, no, don't speak to her husband. Let me tell y'all something. Let me just stop right here. Let me just pause for the cause. I, oh my God, it's just so hard with these. Because baby, these housewives stands, honey, they lose their minds if you don't subscribe to group thinking and whatnot. But let me just tell you something, honey. She would have went to the upper room if she would have looked at my husband and said, get your, now I don't know where y'all from, but where I'm from, we don't play those types of games, Okay. I would have went straight candy season seven when they had that pillow talk. I'll drag you in this when she went crazy on mail. <laughs> Baby, I would have been no more good. Do y'all hear me? There is no reason that you need to address this woman's husband. Like, what is wrong with you, lady? And she is so serious with it. So Mia is trying to explain to G, you know, I will not be disrespected. Um, this is not going to be tolerated. I'm ready to go. So G hit us with a Greg Leaks. He's like, well, then let's leave. Shout out to Greg Leaks. May he rest in peace. Baby reminded me of when Nene said, honk the horn on him, Greg. Boop, boop. Honk the horn on him, G. Boop, boop. Shout out to Nene Leaks. And so Wendy's trying to get them to stay, honey, but everything's all over the place. So Karen is in the kitchen asking Candace, did you know about her mom? She's like, when I said your mother's low budget at Giselle's house, no, I didn't know about her mom. And what else? Because now you know about her mama and you're still saying your mama. Candace, what is wrong with you? moving forward so they getting ready to leave honey because they have had enough okay and g already drunk honey i hope he ain't gonna drive she's like you know i have too much to lose so ashley said you know i don't want y'all to leave yes ashley we know honey because then y'all gonna have to get into it and y'all gonna get to fighting so of course you don't want Mia to leave because you want to make sure she has somebody else to argue with so in the other room chris and eddie are playing pool chris and acting like his wife is not losing her mind i'm like sir <laughs> Are you really ignoring all the ruckus happening in the other room? Chuck, oh my goodness. So Chris goes, where's G? Here go Eddie. Now let me tell y'all something. The way I hollered, I do not know where this accent came from, but Eddie looked at Chris and he goes, the pimp was told to get his hoe. <laughs> oh my God. When I tell y'all, I said, what in the prince of zamunda is going on here honey when i tell y'all i holler i said eddie what eddie is hilarious from the shrimp at the table at the restaurant to the pimp was told to get his hoe and y'all know i don't like to cuss but baby that was funny to me honey oh i hollered anywho i was like why does he sound like he live in zamunda chris gonna say by candace eddie said you can use deductive reasoning honey i know that's right now who else is gonna be charlie what else is going on moving forward wendy comes in like she's a kid telling on her younger siblings she's like eddie eddie come here they fighting they throwing glass um chris i need you to go get candace g want to leave please talk to him <laughs> oh my god let me tell you something 
tell y'all something. Baby, she came there like she was going to get her daddy, baby, because her sister and brother would not stop fighting each other, honey. Oh, child. Poor Wendy, honey. This is her first trip. The heifer's acting a fool, stressing out her wig. Child, it already wasn't glued down good. Oh, my God. So, meanwhile, a scholar is like, I was going to eat that salad. She in the kitchen talking to Candace. Candace was like, no, she threw it at me. And, you know, if she has a story about her mother, how does she know I don't have a story about being low budget? Candace, cut it out. Okay? There's nothing about you low budget. You came from an affluent family. Okay? Mama was paying all the bills and whatnot. So, we all know there was nothing about you that was low budget. We are very proud of you that you came out of your own pocket to pay for and fund your video because you are an independent artist we are very proud of you but girl you are grasping for straws at this point honey the read does not match the offense and i understand that the low budget comment you know whatever hurts your feelings but you need to just express that you need to get some therapy so that all those words that you have all that verbiage that huge vocabulary how you're able to just get into it as you get into it verbally you need to be able to express to someone you hurt my feelings what a simple sentence with so much power. Child, cause y'all are getting on my nerves. Mia, you owed her an apology initially, but after you, you know, told her and people told her what was going on with your mama and she continued with the foolishness, then there you have it. Oh, no ma'am. Chris comes in. She's like, I'm about to get in trouble. He's like, why are you about to get in trouble? So or why would you be getting in trouble if you did nothing wrong? So Candace starts trying to explain. She's like, Mia threw salad at me. I threw two pieces at her first okay let's make sure we say first and then chris said well you threw the salad candace said the pimp and his concubine should leave i'm like oh my god oh child at this point candace should be a shock jock like she needs to get a podcast and just go off sis honey make some money if you just gonna lose your mind every time you open your rabbit mouth honey this is not making any sense to me like if you're gonna just go off like you like to do then honey let an audience that appreciates you listen to you for a little coinage child call me candace honey i can show you how to make some money so anywho moving forward so chris is like no they don't need to leave come on let's go outside so candace is going outside with him and this is my thing candace acts like a petulant child and i'm not changing it okay there is a way to be a grown adult and voice what your concerns are without losing your mind Giselle and Karen they get into it all the time but the two of them are going to verbalize what's wrong now neither one of them going to apologize because these selfies cannot be bothered with each other on any other given day but they are able to verbalize it child this is just crazy so Karen is inside telling Mia that she needs to stand up with pride and dignity and remember who you are and whose you are shout out to Iyanla no one can make you or your mother feel cheap i know that's right karen let me just say that i could feel and see that karen you know she realized that it really did affect mia and she was being sincere in this moment now normally sometimes i look at karen and i'm like child you just want them to follow you okay even though i love the grand dame but honey i'm gonna call a spade a spade unbiased over here but in this moment I felt like she really knew that that hurt Mia and she wanted to go in there. She wanted to be there for her and I appreciated it. She said, don't give them that power. So Mia was like, you know what? I feel that. But when someone is that ruthless, then they put me in that space. G is out there with the guys, probably done sobered up by now. And he says that he didn't even want to come. So if she ready to go, then he going to act like a tree and leave. Okay. He cannot be bothered. In the next scene, all the ladies are rallying around Mia and Mia is telling them that she can say whatever about her, but not about her mom. She's like, you know, just imagine having to fend for yourself as a child. No, she was not the best mom to me. But despite the way that she treated me, she's worked hard to get where she is. And I'm not going to just let somebody talk about my mama. I mean, it's just not going to work like that. She said, if my mom relapses because of this, then Candace will have to catch me outside. And then she started to cry. Now, let me say what I have to say about this. Mia, I'm going to speak for me. I feel very bad that Candace said this about your mother. But you cannot put the weight of her sobriety on Candace's shoulder. Although this may be a point of, you know, relapsation, because she did say her mom says every day she has to fight for sobriety every single day. And I understand that seeing something like this could make her backslide, but I don't want you to give Candace that much power. Okay. Let's, let's just not even speak that. Let's not put it out into the atmosphere. Let's not put it out into the world. Honey, your mom's going to be fine. 
Okay, shout out to mama. Moving forward. Outside, Candace is yelling and whatnot. She's like, from day one, she been coming for people. Candace, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Girl, what does that have to do with you? So he's like, well, let them handle that. I'm like, I know that's right, Chris. So Candace is like, she wanted smoke, so I invited her into the room for smoke. Girl, shut up. You ain't gonna bust a grape. Child, please. <laughs> You know, I was trying to listen to it, honey, but between that bad lace and I could see that part so good, honey, and it really didn't have the powder in it that needed to be had, and the lace was looking ashy. Oh, child, it was just a fool. The wind was blowing, honey. It was just too much going on, okay? And child, it was really annoying me, and I was like, girl, please, you would get more smoke from a chimney than she got from you. Girl, so she did get in your business for no reason, okay? Let's just say that, which they all acknowledged was wrong, but she didn't start with you today, okay? Today, you started it. And that's that on that. Moving forward. So Chris said, that's what children do. Honey, Candace ain't trying to hear you, but I'm glad she spoke up. A scholar is inside explaining to Mia that the low budget comment hurt Candace's feelings. So Mia is like, yeah, it was. Okay, when I first started, everything was low budget. Now I make $450,000. I don't mean to say that. I just have to say I make $450,000. Mia, it's tacky. It's giving very much tic tac. Okay, honey, this is a couple's trip plus a throuple. Can we just get a break? Because you have been saying that since they met you. <laughs> since you came to the nude interlude, you have told us 19,000 times how broke we are and how rich you are. Moving forward. A scholar said, so, you know, is this the reason you talk about money because you never had it? She said, no, I talk about it because I worked my butt off. Chum. So Candace is telling Chris, when she comes for something she worked hard for, then all bets are off. And I kind of see that because this is my thing. When you come from a place of everyone talking about what your mommy paid for and how your mommy pays for this and your mommy writes the checks for that, and then you finally are able to achieve something with your own pocketbook, you're very sensitive about that. But as I stated 79 minutes ago, girl, just, just say that. Oh, child. Chris said, well, are you insecure? He said, well, if you're saying she's insecure and you respond this way, it's looking like you're insecure as well. <laughs> Chris, you better speak your speech, honey. You better pipe up. He said, at some point, somebody needs to shut the fuck up. Okay, because y'all getting on Chris's nerves. Okay, it's drink o'clock somewhere. And now he got to be sitting out here with you talking and whatnot when he really wants to be in there playing pool. This is just ridiculous, honey. Y'all couldn't have no kids because between the kids and Candace, honey, Chris will lose his mind. Well, honey, we know your wife ain't going to shut up. So, I mean, there's that moving forward so child i thought g had sobered up right so i'm sitting here like all these helpers hollering i know that's got to be a sobering moment but i was wrong apparently not g money honey he's in full effect <laughs> he stay with his tongue out like that scream mask what's up every time i see him he got his tongue hanging out his mouth boy put your tongue up oh so Karen is like, well, you know what, Mia, just stay. Because if you do, cooler heads will prevail if you want to stay. Here go, G. That's the women. The men, they good. Karen said, yes, we are opinionated. Yes, we sure are. Shout out to the opinionated family. Then he looks at Karen and goes, why you look so good, girl? And starts licking his tongue out like a lizard. I said, oh, my God. Here go, Karen. Oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> look, y'all. Y'all know Karen gets skeeved out in a minute. Do y'all hear me, honey? Karen, Karen does not like it, honey. She does not want it. Please keep your tongue in your mouth. So then Karen goes in her confessional. Do you not know you're talking to the ambassador of Surrey County? Have some dignity. <laughs> oh, I cannot. Let me just say something about this season. No matter what these heifers are arguing and fussing about, the comedic goal that is this cast it's just too much for me honey i love some foolishness child i am goofy to a fault and when i hear them making these little snide comments and then i'm watching the visual on top of that oh child i live moving forward so karen is like get your man mia honey i know that's right so then ashley comes down and she's like are y'all staying Mia said, as long as she stays in her lane, I'm going to be fine. She can say my husband met me on a corner or a strip club if she wants to. So then G said, I met you as a waitress, then as an entertainer. Honey, full length gown and all. I know that's right. He said, you know, I would always request her to sit and talk. And I would pay her X amount of dollars to sit and talk with me. Mia said, yes, $10,000 for two hours. 
Racks on racks on rack, racks, racks on racks on rack, racks. Shout out to Tiger. Baby, I know that's real. Not 10K, just to sit and talk. Child, what is Mia the entertainer talking about? Is she telling jokes like Cedric the entertainer? Like, help me to understand. <laughs> so Ashley said, Ooh, that's a lot of money for somebody's time. Ashley, okay? While you're sticking your nose where it doesn't belong, entertainers are paid for their talent. Moving forward, Karen said, you know, we have to get to know each other. So, child, let me go to my room, honey, because she had to go because she couldn't have, take no more G and his tongue and all that. She had to go. Candace is over there touching up her makeup. And a scholar's like, girl, oh, my goodness, are you okay? I mean, the tears. Here go, Candace. They just come. Then a scholar going to look at her and say, oh, that's so cute. No, it's not. Those weaponizing tears, they're not cute. You don't get to act a fool and then cry about it later. Now, unless you're in one of those states where you're so mad you cry, that's different. But all that acting a fool and then crying a little bit after, that's not cute. Sure. So Chris is literally in there cleaning up Candace's mess, honey, <laughs> art imitating life and whatnot. And he's sweeping up the kitchen. So Ashley walks in. She's like, oh, that's nice. So Chris was like, look, I haven't seen you since Karen's love party. And, um, you know, I know that me and Michael, we don't really get along, but I just want to say congratulations on baby number two. So Ashley was like, thank you. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much. He said, you know, I still follow you on the IG and, you know, motherhood looks real good on you. Baby. When I tell y'all when Candace see this, honey, her head is about to spin around like the exorcist. Chris, you committed a cardinal sin, honey. We unfollow together. If I don't like the heifer, then you don't like the heifer. You know that's how Candace roll. Child, you follow her still and you compliment her? Oh, no, ma'am. Honey, Candace is about to tear him a new one. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> Baby, it's going to be on in that house tonight. So then Ashley said, yeah, well, your wife called me wide and I didn't really appreciate that. He said, you know, she uses a lot of adjectives, not adjectives. <laughs> Child, Chris sweeping that floor is the most work he done all week. Moving forward. So then everyone goes to choose their rooms and um, Karen and Ashley, they're talking, right? So Karen said in her confessional, I just got here and I've seen a salad toss, a plate broken and an uncontrollable tongue rolling around. Woo. Oh, child. Oh, honey, it's been too much in 10 minutes. Oh, my goodness. So then the other ladies come into Ashley's room. A scholar said, if I wanted to argue, I could have just stayed home. Not you and Dre fussing. Girl, let me find out. So Karen said, I could have tossed my own salad at home. Child, when she said that, I just laid across the bed. I just laid flat on my back with my hands up in the air like I know God. <laughs> I know good and well Karen don't realize what she's saying. Now, how does that work? Child, that's what I want to know. So a scholar said, Karen, you can't toss your own salad. Karen said, yeah, yeah, I can. You know how they just threw the salad, you know, when we were in the room. Ashley said, you know, there's another meaning to that, right? She was like, what? A scholar said, somebody eating the booty like groceries. Okay. Wendy said, you want somebody to eat your... I said, oh my gosh, this is too much. Too much. Child, they're going to give Karen a heart attack. In the next scene, Mia does a quick FaceTime with the kids. G is knocked out. Honey, that's a good drunk nap. You know what I'm saying? This is the kind of sugar daddy I want. I want one where I can get him liquored up and laid out without him having to touch me. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if G gonna make it to dinner or not. Ashley trying to call Michael, but honey, Michael ain't gonna answer a call when Ashley go on a trip if he don't do nothing else. Child, he is definitely not about to answer Ashley. And one in town too? Oh no, ma'am. But y'all know what I was looking at? I was looking at the fact that Ashley drinks these Coronas like apple juice. Girl, you got to constantly pump and dump. Because when you see a corona, you lose your mind. Child, you would think with everything that's going on, honey, we would put things down called corona. Moving forward. So everyone is getting ready for dinner except G. Honey, I don't know what he doing. Just then, Pinky and the Brain show up. Giselle and Robin. Robin is like, Ashley guilt tripped me into coming. So Giselle was like, yeah, me and my luggage are here, but we're not here for Wendy or her mean stank face. Uh, we know you're here for production and your check and your job <laughs> oh honey we know but girl get inside first always complaining about something hopefully she lets you use the restroom moving forward Giselle said I talked to Ashley Robin was like oh you did Giselle said yeah I heard they were losing their minds acting a fool so then we see Ashley on the phone spreading the news and the mess like she liked to do so now I get it y'all came to make sure y'all wasn't left out of the mess okay got it so, of course, the first person they see when they come in is Chris. So, Giselle quickly handed her bags off to Chris because y'all know Chris got a little soft spot for Giselle. But y'all ain't heard that from me, allegedly. So, she gets upstairs to find she's in the attic. <laughs> 
Shout out to flowers in the attic. Honey, she in the attic and whatnot. So it's two beds. And Giselle is like, where's Robin sleeping? Honey, she's sleeping in that second bed. Y'all like to be together? Y'all together tonight. And she's like, so where's the restroom? Child Chris don't know all that. Not y'all coming last minute and expecting the best accommodations. Y'all know how these girls' trips go. Like, you come and you get what's left. So Candace sees Rob in the hallway and runs into her arms and wraps her legs around her. I guess that's what she's doing this season. Girl, you better be careful, honey, because they side on you as well. Okay. So Candace comes in and she tells them what happened, right? She's like, Mia called my visuals low budget. Uh, let's just say that so did Giselle. Okay, so you might want to take her boot off to show her. That'll learn her. <laughs> Like, honey, she has something to say about your low budget video as well. They all did. But let me just say, honey, that I said, I didn't see it as low budget. I mean, where else was she going to shoot a video besides a parking lot? Okay. What was she going to go? Drive back inside the mall? Honey, she had to use a parking lot. That's what the budget, how much is the parking lot going for these days? Because we can use anything at the local Walmart for free. As long as them little security people in them trucks don't start driving by. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like it could have been for the free. The equipment is what we were paying for. Cause child, we know the cars didn't show up. So we know we can scratch that off the budget. Child is just a mess. Anywho, Giselle said the same dang thing. And so did Robin. Even when Mia was asking about if Chris was on payroll, Robin and Giselle was like, oh, we wanted to know that as well. So if we're going to lose our minds, then we need to lose our minds on everyone. So she said, then I said your mother after she said that. Giselle said, which wasn't nice. Candace tries to lie and say, Mia was coming for my mama in that moment. Honey, girl, she was like, why are you talking to my mama? Giselle said, talking to your mother and talking about your mother, those are two different things. I got up in that moment. I looked out the window to make sure that the pigs were not flying. Honey, pigs were definitely flying because I agree with Gizzard. Candace, she got messy and talked about your shoot, not your mom. Let's just keep that in mind, okay? The punishment doesn't fit the crime. And I don't care how people try to justify it. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, you, you listen, let's just, let's just take out whatever it is. If somebody says, your mama, normally we take that lighthearted. We're like, oh, your mama. Okay, <laughs> girl, please, your mama. But honey, we all know that if you try to do that to Mama Joyce over there on Real Housewives of Atlanta, baby candy will claw your eyes out. But she, you know, she ride or die for her mama. But in a normal circumstance, you just say your mom it's a real childish thing to say so you know you just say it but in Mia's case she has this stigma attached to her mom and she's very sensitive about it and she's opened up and she shared that so that should not be something that you throw back in her face on mad day girl get it together so Giselle said in this group do we talk about people's mother she said yes people come for Dorothy all the time let me just say this I do not retain Potomac information. So somebody comment down below and say when they talked about Dorothy, because I'm, I'm serious. I really don't remember when they did. I know they talked about her being in Dorothy's townhouse because she was paying for it and whatnot, but I don't remember them actually speaking about Dorothy. So y'all just fill me in down below. So Giselle goes, you said her low budget mother. Candace then repeats the same thing in a different way and says it's an equal rebuttal. Um, No, ma'am. To me, you saying it over and over knowing what she's gone through is not an equal rebuttal you could have said your clit has left your body shout out to nene leaks you could have said your wardrobe is low budget that motel six town home you live in is low budget i mean anything you could have threw out anything except the lady's mom that has a substance abuse problem tell us it's the fool they're like no the bottom line is candace is spoiled point blank and the period so child ain't got no more time for this so then Robin said, regardless of her mother's situation, Candace is like, which I didn't know, but I learned later, honey, and didn't care. Let's make sure we put that in there. She's like, I saw the hurt in her face, yet you continued even in the moment. You bulldozed right on past the hurt in her face and continued saying, I don't give a, I don't give a dang. I don't give a, still hollering, girl. So Robin is like, well, that makes it worse. Child, this is, everything is just crazy. Moving forward. Giselle was like, well, what was the mean when all this was happening? So Candace said, you know, Chris took me outside. He cussed me out, honey, as he should. Giselle said, I heard she was crying badly. Here go Candace. Oh my God, was she? Girl, you don't care. Because in your mind, you're thinking, mission accomplished. Candace, something is wrong with you. You're sitting here skinning and grinning with these two when they also said things about your video being low budget. Giselle said to your face, your husband rides your coattails. 
I, I just don't get it. I really don't. I really don't. And honey, I don't want to hear no fussing down below, child, because I'm not even about to read it. Honey, I, I just don't really, this is crazy. So then after that, she backpedals and says, you know, if I knew about her mama trauma, then I would have just talked about her big feet. Lies. You knew, yet you carried on like a child on the playground that got their ball stolen. So I'm not, child, mm -mm, honey, you were very much, get my ball back. You were very much like that. So I don't even want to hear it, child. Moving forward, Wendy peeks her head in and she's smiling and whatnot. Here go Giselle. Oh, she's smiling. I haven't seen that in a while. Giselle, what reason would she have to smile, honey? You told her she was going to have to piss behind a plant. <laughs> Like, I'm just not understanding how these people don't understand what they've done. So Wendy said, well, welcome. So happy to have you here. Wendy, baby, they didn't get the GVO memo. So child, you might want to fill them in. So Giselle was like, so is there a bathroom? She's like, oh, there's no bathroom in here. She said, do you see one? Oh, well, why don't you use the one she was going to use at your event? Oh, okay. So then they zoom in on this boot on Giselle's foot when she asked about that restroom. When I tell you I screamed, I said, oh my God, honey, they take me out each and every Sunday night. So Wendy said, well, the rooms weren't assigned and this was the last one that was left. So this is what y'all got. Okay. Take it or leave it. Help us. So just as it was getting tense, Ashley comes in with shots. Perfect timing, child. Shot, 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 shots. Child, because they sure needed it. Giselle is still trying to find the nearest restroom while Robin searches for a hotel because it's that time of the month. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of when Ashley hosted at her lake house and Giselle and Robin had twin beds and no AC child <laughs> when i tell you they cursed well at least they didn't get the cottage last trip moving forward it's time to head out to dinner this is where the foolishness is about to start again they all get in the sprinter and g is snoring and whatnot and in the back is karen giselle and ashley and they're all talking about g was trying to lick his tongue out of karen and whatnot Ooh, being gross so then she asked giselle if she knew what tossing the salad meant she's like yeah you don't know listen Giselle is a Virgo honey we got a little undercover freak in us so of course she knows what tossing the salad is okay get into it she said do you know about the tea bag so Karen was like no so Giselle said what on a man looks like a tea bag and so Karen was like the balls she was like yes and then what do you do with the tea bag here go Karen in her confessional Ugh. well honey did you see how openly and freely they talked about it honey you know they do it but this tea is the only tea bag and I'm doing <laughs> Oh, Karen, honey, we know. Because you control Ray's tongue when y'all kiss. Child, that's why Ray over there texting that other girl, allegedly. Child, this is a fool. If these two can kiki, anybody can. And it was really good to see. And side note, this seating arrangement, oh my gosh. When I tell you I hollered, you got Robin pressed up against Eddie and Wendy. You have Candace side by side with Mia and G. And then you got Chris up there, honey. He got a, ain't got a care in the world. Child, this was funny to me. In the next scene, they get to the restaurant and whatnot. Giselle got on her Sheba Charade joggers, child. <laughs> the rhinestone edition. I said, what in the rhinestone cowboys going on here? Yeah. So they sit down at the table and G whistles so loud, honey, the whole restaurant shut up. I was like, well, what is wrong with you? So Wendy tells him the itinerary for the weekend. So as they're ordering, Ashley is trying to get some carpe diem peen for Giselle, looking at these average men behind him, right? So Giselle was like, oh, no, I'm good, especially when I'm a little bit crippled. Uh, no, honey, just tell her, listen, I like my coffee black. Honey, I'm just saying, child. I mean, I don't know if it was just me, but I don't think those are her type, Ashley, but we know that's what you like to do. Moving forward. So as they're waiting for their food, Robin is still looking for a place to change her pad, okay, because she got a bad attitude, honey. She is mad because it is that time of the month. She's like, look, I'm on my cycle. I hate everything and everyone. Robin, why did you come? Okay, never mind. I already know why you came. You came to protect Giselle should she get into it with Wendy. Got it. But, girl, if you wasn't going to have no fun and you were just going to be a sourpuss, you could have stayed at the house and argued with Juan Dixon. Honey, this don't make no sense. But I also have to say this. I don't blame her for wanting her own restroom now because I need my own accommodations during that time of the month. Honey, I don't want to share nothing with nobody. Moving forward. So the guys at the next table send the ladies shots. Then the table behind them goes, well, what about your wives? Not what about the wives? Baby, somebody sleeping on the couch. Child, I just want to be on TV because ain't no way. <laughs> it ain't no way. It ain't no way that you're going to sit up here and send these random women some shots. And I'm sitting back here. And why are we at two separate tables? Child, that don't make no sense either. So Wendy was like, y'all are their wives? Oh, my gosh. So she buys them shots in return. Karen gets up and goes over to them. She's like, hey, 
I'm about to renew my vows to Ray, 25 years, and I appreciate the shots, but I'm married, but you need to buy your wives whatever they want, okay? Because that's how you make it to 25 years. Karen, don't nobody know Ray. <laughs> The men don't know you and Ray about to renew y'all vows. Child, this is a mess. So then Wendy said, let's toast to forgiveness. Ashley said, uh-uh, not so fast. I didn't complete my messy assignment. Because <laughs> child, this messy helper is about to get into it. Now, let me just say this. Ashley, you should have just sat there and ate your food. Because what you do next is what caused all this to happen. Okay? It's embarrassing. So she looks at Chris and she goes, so what do you think about earlier with me and Candace? Do you want to like, did you think you should have just de-escalated the situation? Why, Ashley? Why is that your business? Why are you asking that? Like everything is going perfectly fine. That makes no sense. So Chris said, you know, I took her out back and I cussed her out because I don't subscribe to that. I'm a real man. So then he says, to be honest, I'd like to get to a place with Michael where I'm, I am with G. You know, y'all could act up and we're going to still be cool. So Ashley said, I think that's where you are but he has strong opinions about how you live your life and you have strong opinions about his and he said i never said anything about michael um at the reunion everyone had something to say about michael didn't you say that they called you or they wanted you to appear in court or something like that ashley your man is mr me too okay he likes to grab and grope so of course people have their thoughts and people are going to speak their speech honey so i mean i don't understand what you're talking about you have to fight the whole world everybody thinks that Michael is a little weirdo and that's that on that she said false so then they do a flashback of the reunion Chris said I have never talked sh about him but he's talked about me Candace said Michael referred to Chris as white trash so then Chris was like Candace just be quiet Ashley said didn't you call him a slave driver and not production zooming in on overseer now I don't know if that was the overseer of her finances or if it was really honey a slave overseer but what got me is how are you going to be talking about Ashley's situation when both of y'all married to white men? Oh, child. Moving forward. So Candace said, you know, because he drives his slaves. Oh, my God. Let me. I was speechless when she said that. Ashley said, oh, so I'm a slave? B, you can't get right to save your life. Eddie said, B, are we going left? <laughs> That's the same thing I said, Eddie. Oh, child, we haven't even gotten entrees yet, honey. This is a fool. So Ashley said, you have no idea how to be a civil being, human being. So Chris said, quiet as is kept, neither does your husband. Oh, child, not Chris going in. Now, Chris, this is you saying something about Michael, okay? Let's just keep it all on record, child. So Ashley said, when you got into it with Mia, you told her, I've been through this before, last year. So Ashley said, the common denominator in both situations is you. Ugh, I really hate when Ashley has a point but it's a little bit of a point, okay? The common denominator of all the fussing and fighterization of it all is Candace. But also, Ashley, you are a mess box, okay? You start mess all of the time. You have been starting mess since you hit the scene. And let's not forget that you and Robin also had a few, you know, words back in the day before y'all became this thruple. Okay, so I, I mean, girl, please. People in glass houses, moving forward. So she's upset that Candace can't take responsibility and own up to it. So they start going on about last year and whatnot and the part that Ashley played. And she's like, you're a messed up individual. So then she starts cussing Ashley out. But Ashley, you started it, honey. You should have just left this girl alone. She didn't say nothing to you. Okay, nothing. So Giselle is like, but she didn't start the fight last year. Candace said, yes, but she got involved on some legal shit. Okay, she did, and she was not even present. She did write down some statements and whatnot, and she was not even there. So Chris is trying to take her out because he doesn't want to be embarrassed in front of these people, child. So he's trying to pull her and take her out there fighting. She's like, no, I don't need to go anywhere. Take your hands off me. Get your hands off me, Ike. He's like, anime, anime bullet, let's go. <laughs> child, so they fighting like Ike and Tina. Ooh, when anime wouldn't eat the cake. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Clearly, Chris has no say when she gets upset and he walks out. Candace stays put instead of going to see what's happening with her man. And Giselle said she didn't start that, Candace. Candace said yes, but she got involved in some legal stuff to be vindictive. Flashback. So Candace is at the table telling Ashley, suck my... And Ashley's like, you ain't got one, but maybe you got an oversized clit. So then Candace points at Mia and goes, no, that's your friend, lady. She hasn't said one word to you all night. Okay, now I want y'all to take note on who's starting with whom. Okay, because instead of Candace going after her husband, a scholar husband, he gets up and he goes after Chris. 
So Chris is outside telling Dre he's tired of being embarrassed. Every time he makes a friend, these heifers start fussing. So Wendy is like, I can't take you heifers nowhere. This don't make no sense. So Mia said, you can't say Ashley is acting out of character when so are you. So child, what you say something to Candace for? Honey, you should be quiet as well. Candace said, this ain't your fight. Don't embarrass your benefactor. Behave all while pointing her finger in Mia's face. G said, I'm a kept man. She made me. I'm happy as hell. I know that's right, G. I know that's right, baby. That's how you come out of a drunken stupor to defend your wife. I know that's real. At this point, Candace is like, very good. That's great. Mia's like, G is on my payroll. So Candace finally gets up to go talk to Chris. Oh, child, please let her go. So the thruple is at the table talking about Candace's behavior and Giselle goes, you know, it seems like last year happened in vain. You know, she went through a lot last year, but clearly she hasn't learned anything. It's so funny how y'all can hold Candace's mouth accountable now, but you babied her all last season and you expect that she's going to learn something? How can you learn something if you don't think you did anything wrong? The whole fight was between Candace and Monique. Both played a part. But according to the Green Eyed Bandits, it was only Monique that played a part. Granted, Monique is the one that got physical. But now you're saying something totally different. Honey, it's the hypocrisy of it all. So Robin said, it's almost like she's baiting. Honey, not baiting. So are you admitting that Candace provokes others? Girl, is that your period talking? Honey, I was so confused. And that was the end of the episode. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought Robin meant by saying baiting. This is your friend. This is your girl. Child, I'm so confused. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought, what your thoughts are, honey. Keep it cute or keep it on mute, child, because I do not want to hear all this fusterization. It is very hard to watch this show in review when you have housewife stands out there who are pick a side, pick a side. I am unbiased over here on this channel. Every last one of these helpers can go and every last one of these helpers can stay. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.